Hi, it's Chris here from Archimedia Accounts doing you another video on how to mass the business finances. And this one is about creating forecasts in zero. So if you're a small business, you can create your forecasts in zero. You don't have to um, sort of purchase some really expensive forecasting software. And what is the difference between forecasts and budgets? And when would you use, because uh, they are different by the way, and when would you use them in different, different situations? We all know numbers is the language of business. So that's kind of really, really master numbers. You don't have to learn about journals. You don't have to learn about depreciation or any of that kind of stuff. Obviously, you're going to have an accountant, but you as a business owner really need to master your your numbers and nobody's going to teach you how to do it. Your accountant's not going to teach you kind of like courses. Uh, you're not going to become a bookkeeper or anything like that. So I will teach you how to learn your numbers and how to master your, your business's finances. So as you can see, I've come over here to the demo account in zero so i'm not showing any sensitive client data i've gone to accounting and reports so we're here in the report section of zero and you just want to hit in the search bar budgets and go to the budget manager so this is where we get to set the figures for our forecast so drop down here is all the different forecasts that you can create, forecasts and budgets. So if you want to create a new one, hit add budget and give it a name, for example, worst case. And there's a number of reasons you might want to create different budgets, different forecasts. And obvious one is just so that you can do different scenarios. And that's actually the main reason you would do forecasts is different scenario planning. It gives you the option as well to do one just for particular tracking categories. So in this case, I've got one for region. But if you had more tracking categories set up, it would appear there as well. I'm not going to do any here. I'm just going to work on this overall budget for the entire company. Now to start with, we want to do change the date of our forecast. So I'm going to have mine starting from January 2024, which is next month. I want actual figures to show in there of, th of three months, just to give me a bit of reference. And I want the, f the duration of the forecast to last for 12 months. I can't have it lasting longer, but I'll just have it lasting for 12 months. As you can see, I've got some figures in here already. So for £7,000 worth of sales here, um, I'm going to put 350000 of costs of goods sold, so purchases. But if I hit the arrow like you saw there, I can then change all the figures in this forecast without having to input them individually. And I've put them all to increase by 5% every single month. And because the cost of sales are increasing, obviously the sale, that means the sales are increasing as well. Mine at 7% actually, um, because the sales are going to be a bit higher than the, the, the cost of sales. And then going to put some direct wages in here um, of £1,000. Um, I'm not going to have them increasing by 5% because obviously it's a labour cost. But six months in, I'm going to have them increasing by a bit. The idea is I've got like a bit of a part-time worker coming in to help me out as the sales go up a bit. I've got my advertising cost in here. And I'm just literally going to go through some of these costs. Some accounting, accounting costs, bank fees, and the rest of it. Then what I want to do is add some insurance. These costs are just general. I've got some interest there. 
many loans. I'm going to put some IT software costs in there. I think that's quite smart to do. Some lighting, utilities costs. Definitely want some of those. Motor vehicle expenses, I'll say about £100 a month. And then we've got some postage. Sorry, a little arbitrary figure there. Printing and stationery. Bit of rates, some rent. <clears throat> and then some repairs and maintenance. Some staff training, subscriptions, telephone and internet. Bit of travel. And then, as you can see here, what that's done is left me with a loss. So I want to come back up to my sales and do something about that. So we've got about a four grand loss, something like that. It's going to be a bit of a loss in my first few months of of starting this major scenario, this major project, but I don't want it to be that big. So now I know I need to make about 12 grand of sales to be able to hit my targets. And instead of three and a half thousand of costs of cost of sale now, it's gonna probably be about five thousand. Um and obviously, you know, if you had different products, it might be a good idea to kind of split them up. But um you can get go into that kind of detail later. Direct wages, that's gonna go up as well. And in six months time, that's going to go up even more. And then what you're going to want to do is obviously increase advertising a little bit. Maybe you'll have to increase it more to hit those kind of sales. But these figures are kind of for you to play around with. And as you can see, I've got a bit of loss now, but it's getting better and better each month. And then by the end of the year is when I'm kind of really hitting my targets for this new business venture. And I'm doing sort of 20,000 of, of sales. So that's why this is kind of called a budget and a budget and a forecast of kind are very, very similar. But a budget is used to get a grip over your finances so that to see if you're hitting your, your projected target each month. Whereas a forecast is more kind of scenario planning, different what would happen in different cases. So if we hit save on here, we can then um, figure out how to get this into a, a nice report for ourselves. And just putting it out there, we can export this budget to Excel, change it up in Excel, and then import it like this. But obviously, I'm not going to do that right now. To be honest, I quite I find it quite easy to to change it all um, in uh, here in zero, but um, that's neither here nor there. Excel does give you quite a lot of flexibility sometimes. Now you want to go back to accounting and reports and find the budget summary report, and this kind of report is great for looking at a forecast. Rather than using your budget like to record variances or anything like that, i.e. to see if you're hitting your targets, uh, this is great for forecasts. You can add little notes in like this so it looks cool for your report, for your team. Um, and yeah, as you can see, this looks great for, um, for forecast. We just need to choose the right dates because they're not right in there. Um, put December here, but I actually... And then you want to put it for, for one month at a time. You can choose your different forecast. Um, and then uh, the, num the, the number of periods. Obviously the max period for this one was 12 months. Um, so um, update there. If you hit update. It's now updated the figures. Actually I think I was started in January 24 didn't it. So that's what we're doing there. We only created 12 months of figures. So that's why we 
we've got a maximum of 12 months. I think zero goes up to a maximum of 24 months. If you want to add those figures in. So yeah, it all looks nice and beautiful. Um, if you really wanted to, you could hit those figures to see the breakdown. Um, but yeah, this this is for me is an extremely nice looking forecast. Um, and just stressing the difference between forecast and um, budget again is forecast is used for scenario planning. So what would happen if we took on um, two more staff, you know, ramped up our advertising and therefore increased sales by 100%? What would happen in that case? You know, what would the profit look like? Um, and and then you can share that with your team. I'll do another video on how to represent this in terms of cash. So you want to hit PDF on the export, and then you want to have a look here at your PDF forecast. And yeah, looks beautiful, doesn't it? So you share this with your team and go through it um, for the different scenarios. So you can make decisions, essentially. What scenario should we go with? So thank you so much for watching this video. Um, please like and subscribe this video. So what's this video been about? It's been about the difference between uh, forecast and budget. It's been about creating your forecast in zero. So, I mean, it's great, right? If you can create your forecast within zero itself, it means you don't have to buy another program to do your forecasting. You know, there's lots of different forecasting programs. I'm going to do videos about all of them, and they are awesome. Um, check out Fathom if you haven't already. Um, but but if you if your project is quite small, if your business is quite small, like if you've got less than two hundred thousand pound of sales. Just do your forecast within zero. You don't really need a project, a, a piece of software like Fathom. I mean, even more more sales than that. Yeah, zero should be fine. And like we see in this video, zero is actually really really easy to input your figures into 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 the forecasting, um, and to see what effects it has on your net profit. Um, I've not talked about cash in this video, it's just been about profit, but the concepts are the same and we've inputted the figures, so it's quite easy to turn that into a cash flow forecast as well. And what, are the, what is the difference between budgeting and forecasting? Um, so budgeting is basically a tool that I personally believe, to, to summarize it for you uh, really, really quickly, is... A tool to to get a grip, a, gr a grasp, a grasp over your business to really control your business. So, basically, what you do is you set how much uh, costs, well, you know, what you want to be spending each month, and how much you want to be making in sales each month. And then, what you do is every single month you report your actual figures against those budgeted figures. And that basically shows your team, you can put it like on a big screen or, or whatever you want, it's basically showing your team, look, we're spending too much or we're not making enough, making enough in sales. And also, I mean, the flip, you know, the flip side to it is you, before the month has ended, you can kind of see what your actual figures are and your budgeted figures are. So not only can you, does it help you make better decisions, but it helps you make better decisions you know, pretty much to the day. So you can see like we're halfway through the month and we've not hit this month's sales, you know, half of this month's sales target. So what are we going to do about that? Um, and yeah, obviously that's that's helping you make really good decisions. Forecasting is something different. So forecasting is what I would call scenario planning. So you're doing lots of different scenarios to, to, to figure out essentially the best one or to, or to teach you and your team things so for example what would the next 12 months look like or the next 24 months look like if we started selling these two or three different products so you know obviously we're going to start selling those products we believe we're going to we're going to do 100 grand worth of sales of these products if we started selling them what are the costs associated with those products you know the, the direct costs the the materials the cost of sales whatever the purchases whatever you want to call it but then also, what what's the staff cost going to look like? You know, do we have to hire an extra staff member? What does the advertising spend look like? 
motor vehicle expenses, all those different kind of things. And then it allows you to then project that onto a professional uh, financial forecast to then see what the actual profit looks like. Because what's in your head is quite likely to be very different to what's 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 on paper um and and that's and that's what a forecast is so and then what you do is you do kind of like okay if we sold 100 grand worth of those products but if we only sold 50 grand worth of those products what's the worst case and the costs were higher etc etc so it really allows you to do a lot of planning and then what people would do is obviously once they've kind of made good decisions on or by doing the scenario planning by doing the forecasting they then set a good forecast into a, a transition a good forecast into a budget to then say right now we've hit the nail on the head with this forecast we want to set this as a budget so we want to be hitting those figures every single month and then you can hold your team accountable you can hold yourself accountable to the figures that you wanted to start that you wanted to start uh, achieving and because your team so I'd really really recommend another great tip here is to start is to use your team to build the for, the the forecast the budget together so that you know if, if they're saying like we, we should easily be able to hit those kind of sales and then they don't it's kind of like but you know you made this and uh, that's another tip in terms of uh, managing staff and things is that um, whatever involvement they've had in a planning process, they tend to kind of uh, be uh, very, very, you know, hold themselves accountable to, to the decisions, um, to, you know, to the input that they had. So thank you very much for watching the video again. And uh, yeah, please obviously like and subscribe uh, and just, yeah, just do it now. Uh, I'm going to make some... Pretty amazing content um, in the future and I've got lots of ideas of, of things to do uh, and it's all going to be kind of really exciting and fun. So like and subscribe the video and uh, I can make a lot more stuff. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.